Okay, so this is the chemistry cowboy. I'm going to continue where I left off organic chemistry. So we were last talking about di uh, the diazonium salts that by essentially essentially by uh, reacting uh, uh, what HCl and sodium nitrate, we can make diazonium, which is an excellent leaving group for a series of reactions, especially reactions with like phenyl groups, like arene. So like classify them for essentially step one is always going to be, well, we take a, a phenyl, some site type maybe it's reacted maybe not but we're gonna take a uh, some type of uh, phenylamine aniline we react with na2 hcl and we're gonna get our diazonium salt. Which is going to be an excellent leaving group. So let's look at a series of reactions we can see. So from this, I'm going to abbreviate this AR, the arene, and triple bond. So in the presence of acid and water and heat, we have called technically Na2, N2Cl. I'm going to maybe simplify this, but in the presence of acid and water, heat, we have hydrolysis. Hydrolysis to lyse or to split with water. of acid, we're going to have so from our starting material, say sulfuric acid, for example. Heat, water. We are going to catalyze this to form a phenol. And of course, our N2 and a byproduct of H1. Uh, we kind of talked about this earlier, or last the last class, the Sandmeyer reaction. I don't really expect you to know this name, but Sandmeyer is one with copper salts. So, so some sort of CUX. Now. X could be X could be a chloride. This could be a bromide, but X could also be a cyanide. Doesn't fit the traditional. Well, this is a halogen, but it's basically we take our arene diazonium plus our copper salt. And then we're going to increase just uh, X onto there and form nitrogen as our product. And of course, we have chloride. So we're essentially going to be transferring that X onto the, the R, the, the phenyl group. So that, that's just a way to add chlorine, add bromine, add cyanide, all those pretty straightforward. Now, iodine, which is much, much bigger, a little bit less stable, we have to do a different way. Fluorine, which is a lot more electronegative, a little bit harder to, a little bit 
not nearly as good of a leading group, we have to add different methods. But we can still add this. The diazonium salt is such a good leaving group that we can still add fluorine onto there. It's not a typical thing we can do. With fluorine, we're doing with a hydroborofluoro compound. And then essentially first, First step is we form HCl and we form HCl and we replace the salt on the uh, on the arene. So this forms a solid arene diazonium uh, borofluoride and HCl. This forms a solid. And then on, upon heating, we kick off the nitrogen and we form the uh, fluorophenyl and BF3. So it has to go through an alternative step, but it works. The same thing with. Uh, we have to do something a little different when we deal with iodine. Instead of uh, copper salt, we use potassium iodide. And that'll just kick off. What? N2 and what? KCL. So those are, I mean, it just, we have to use a different salt. We can't use the same copper salt. Now uh, we can also just remove a nitrogen. So like, remember, this is all coming from a nitrogen, an NH2 on a phenyl group. We can actually remove that nitrogen. Say we wanted to add that to be an um, ortho pair director, and then you want to remove it later, like deprotecting the, the airing. We can do that by adding a weak acid of what, like hypophosphite. So, and turn it on NCL. Say H three PO two. Hypophosphorus acid is just going to remove the nitrogen. H PO two. Yeah. So it's just acting like a, it would be a source of adding a. And source of a hydride essentially. That, that, that's a kind of a weird one. But this is, we remember we're using, used to remove the amine. So maybe it was a nitro group that we turned into a amine that we turned into a disodium that we then removed. So say you wanted to do meta, add a group meta, and then to each other, and then remove one of these guys off, you can do it through this. But we can also couple these guys together. This works with a weak electrophiles and electrophilic aromatic substitution. We can couple these guys together. So if I have, say, diazonium salt, and I have another, say, irene, I can snap these guys together to for my and 
F and HCL, of course. And just stick those two, two phenyl groups together with that dinitrogen linker. So all those are just types of uh, reactions that use this strange diazonium salt. It's a particularly good leaving group because I mean, anytime you can form dinitrogen as a product, that's very, very stable, as you should know. And so, so that leaves so mostly just, I mean, it's a very good leaving group. So now we can also synthesize amines by reductive amination. So reductive amination, we add a primary or secondary alkyl to an amine. So we're gonna add various carbon groups onto here. So, so like the first, and it works like this. Step one, we form amines. Form either an imine, I M I N E, or oxine, which is our. So remember our C double bond and R, or C double bond and O H. And then Two, we're going to reduce to an amine. So, for example, looking at this, so remember we can react, this guy will react with a ketone, the presence of acid presence of acid, this will reversibly form a amine. Now, through our reduction, reduction, we can put this to a amine. So we have an R. So now there's many different ways we can go about this. There's many different ways. There is many different reductants we can use. We could use our standard hydrogen over palladium or nickel catalyst, hydrogen over palladium, hydrogen over nickel or catalytic hydrogenation as a means to add hydrogen across the double bond. We could even we could add lithium aluminum hydride in the presence of acid, weak acid or something, just to be our other source of hydrogen. Or we could remember use our zinc with our mercury with Clemenson reduction in the presence of HCl. All those are methods that we can use to reduce the imine or the oxide down to our amine. So we could do the same with a secondary. So let's see. Well, so, okay. So we're going to get either primary, secondary, or tertiary amine. So let's look at these guys each individually. How do we form a primary? How do we form a tertiary? Maybe how do we form a, what's, what's secondary? How do we form a tertiary? So remember, primary has one thing coming off the nitrogen. Secondary has two things coming off the nitrogen. And tertiary has three things coming off the nitrogen. So primary, has to go through the oxide. So starting from here, we're going to react with NH2OH. 
H plus. So the first step gives us our, or the, sorry, the hydroxyl mean gives us our oxime. And as we reduce that, as we reduce it, I'm putting a generic H as a reductant. We reduce that, it will also kick off the water as it reduces this down to an, an amine and a hydroxyl amine, we will also kick off the water for the OH to form water. That's the byproduct. Oftentimes these guys have acid as a catalyst, so dehydrate this guy as well. If I want to form a secondary, secondary amine, I'm going to just use a substituted amine, which we kind of already showed before. So it's just going to be, oh, it's substituted. And then as we reduce this guy, we're going to keep that R group. Now, a tertiary is going to be a little bit tricky. Now, in the secondary one, in the secondary one, we kind of have to limit our reactants. So, our reactants are just sodium boral hydride or lithium aluminum hydride. So, we don't have the same uh, scope of reductants. This one had what we get our hydrogen, we had our lithium aluminum hydride, we had our Clemenson. So there's a lot of possibilities for the first primary. Secondary, we're limited to the uh, hydride adders of sodium borohydride and lithium aluminum. Now, tertiary is a little trickier. We still start with our same ketone intermediate. But now we're going to, we cannot form a stable imine. We're going to form an imenium, and it's not super stable. So we need to avoid reducing the carbonyl. So we're actually going to use a very, very a very special catalyst. So this one's different from all the other ones. So the R2 and H. So we're going to form this intermediate of But, but so as we reduce this, this is going to be the, the reductant is only, there's only one thing. This, this, this guy is the same type of one we use in just reducing the aldehyde, like a sodium boral hydride with acetate. Essentially, yeah, acetate. Trying to read my own notes real quick. CL3. No, that has to be CH3. Yeah. That's it. So, so it's just carefully adding just one hydrogen in there in the form with. I guess acetic acid. So, so that when we form this, we have we've, we've added those two on there. So that one uses a very, very, very special catalyst. So it is not 
we cannot just use any old thing because of we have this very unstable intermediate bit. It's not going to hang around here like these guys are. So. And plus, when we add the lithium, because these both are present, remember, these both are present, we need to make sure we don't accidentally form an alcohol. We don't want to reduce the ketone because essentially we're adding this simultaneously with that. There is not a second step. So remember, this guy, the sodium borohydride triacetate, only reduces aldehydes. So if we have a ketone, it will not react. So as we form this intermediate, even though it is a very small percentage of the product, this will be reduced. And as this is being reduced, it will go to products, thus forcing this to products. So, so because this is highly, highly reversible and probably this is heavily reactant favored, we need to be careful we don't reduce the reactant, not the product. So, something to keep in mind. So that's why we have to use that specialized reductant because it, the the yeah aminium salt is not particularly stable. Okay. Now there's you can also like synthesize amines by acylation followed by reduction. So essentially, what are we doing? We're we're taking uh, ammonium some type, we're adding an acyl chloride like we did in, like we did with the uh, phenyl groups. And we click those together because remember that, chlor that uh, chloride is a particularly good leaving group. So this forms an amide. And then we reduce. Going to reduce this down to an amine. So, if I use a primary amine, well, if I use ammonia, if I use ammonia, it will form a forms a primary primary amine. If I click a primary. It's going to go to a secondary. Secondary would go to a tertiary. We're not going to be clicking on a tertiary amine, though. And reduction can be reduction can simply be done by a lithium aluminum hybride. That this is going to be just our source of reductant. acid or water, some source of protons. So, okay, looking at this, so the general reaction is just like this. We have some, our, nit our nitrogen with a hydrogen attached. I'm just putting an X and a Y, so these are different functional groups. Using our ACL group and pyridine. is just our solvent, our basic solvent, X and our pair. And then we just add, oh, we can do lithium aluminum hydride, water. Water's probably gonna make sure that my nitrogen doesn't get uh, pronated in the end. H two R.
But so essentially, there's a lot of steps. If we can click these guys together, we can and then reduce everything down around it, we can make our lives a little bit easier. That as much as the nitrogen would like to add to the carbonyl, the chloride is, remember, a better leaving group. Chloride is a better leaving group. Just like the same way as when we add a Grignard to there, you would first attack the carbonyl, but you'd kick off the chloride before you would reduce the, uh, the ketone to the, what, the, the carbonyl to an alcohol. If you had two equivalents, yeah, you could of Grignard, you're going to fully reduce that down. One equivalent is going to just remove the chloride. Okay, so the synthesis, okay, let's look at synthesis is limited just to forming primary means. So we have, uh, so let's say you just want primary means. You have, uh, you have direct alkylation. We already talked about this, but we'll hit again, alkylation. And we also have something called Gabriel synthesis. Gabriel. Gabriel synthesis to form primary means with overalkylation. So now the the direct alkylation could be just done like this. But remember, to avoid too many byproducts, we're going to just use an excess, excess of ammonia. So that as it keeps adding, there's more ammonia than there is a reactant here, so that it's not likely to have more than one reactant adding to the same amine. And of course, ammonium. So that's the one way, but the Gabriel amine synthesis avoids the, the idea of over alkylation avoids the so it's going to use a a, a a unusual method to do this okay so let's look at this it's you're going to use a thalamate So what does that look like? There we go. So thalamid, we have our we have a benzene ring, and when we have this bicyclic so this is a the thalamid. So what we're going to do with that is we're going to add phase to deprotonate this nitrogen and make a very, very good nucleophile. This very good nucleophile, let's see what that does in a second, and minus. This guy will add on to there, SN2. Now this will usually attack primary, primary halides. So what that's going to do is so a primary. So as it attacks that, it's going to kick off our halogen or add there where that nitrogen, where that hydrogen was. So there now, in the presence of ammonium, I'm trying to read my own writing. Is it NH2? It, uh, 
the presence then from there, in the presence of a diamine. So, so NH2, NH2, we're going to kick out our, our primary, our primary amine. So we're going to kick that out and form More room. So, and and we're going to form our NH2R. So it's a way to carefully make sure we cannot add more than one group. We cannot add more than one group. It's one of those things we keep this constrained, we keep that practice until we add just one group and then we kick it out when we're finally ready. Same way there's that ways to temper our oxidation or ways to temper the bromination, the ways where we constrain and make sure we only lose or use one atom at a time. So it's a very similar, similar situation. We see this repetition. If we can constrain our reactant so it cannot add more than once, we can temper this down so we can only add one time to form that primary amine. So only a few more reactions and we'll be done with this chapter. So, so what we have here next is reduction of azides and nitriles. So an azide is a N3 minus, an azide, so N, double bond, N, double bond, N. And the, typically there's a functional group of this. And so that's a positive, a negative. And those guys are, uh, make really good leaving groups because you can lose nitrogen gas as well. So first, how do we form these? Well, you can form azides by just or what, by mixing an azide salt with a halogen. And it just is a very good nucleophile and can kick off our halogen. Form an azide salt. N double bond. N double bond N. Then in the presence of a reductant, you form our amine dinitrogen. And the beauty of this is this is reduced without purification. We can just do it directly in the same pot like that. so in this case we could do our our reductant could be uh lithium aluminum hydride hydride and water or it could be hydrogen over palladium palladium a catalytic reduction. The basic idea here is that anytime we can lose this really good leaving group, it makes our life a whole heck of a lot easier. So, but this, this is just essentially acting as a very good nucleophile. Now, Remember, good nucleophiles can do all sorts of things, such as ring open, uh, ring open uh, epoxides. So, this does anything any other good nucleophile could do. So, okay, and the other, the last reaction type would be what formation of nitriles and reduction of them. Let's see. Nitrile is a CN minus, which is also a very good nucleophile. 
Same way, Rx, add a cyanide salt, and we can easily, with SN2, form a cyano bond. Under the same conditions, either with a reduction, we can push that down to an amine. The only difference from this guy versus uh, the azide, the azide will just add a nitrogen. This guy would add a carbon and a nitrogen onto this structure. So if you need an extra carbon, go add with the cyano group. If you have the correct number of carbons already, go with the azide. So this is a way a method to add adds plus a CH2 NH2 versus the NH2. So depending on what you need to do, depends on which one of these guys do you want to react with. Final little thing before we probably call it is reduction of a nitro group. So this is easily, a nitro group is, uh, remember, the NO2, that very unstable, that meta director. Well, nitro group can be easily reduced by a variety of methods. So R, NO2, we're going to essentially say we can reduce that down to an amine. Now we can reduce this by hydrogen over nickel. Hydrogen over nickel, palladium or platinum, any of those guys. So catalytic hydrogenation. Or we could do this with our acid and a metal. Or the metal it could be our iron, zinc, or tin. So our Clemenson would work just fine. We can even reduce these guys, a nitro group with a lithium aluminum hydride. Come on. So a lot of these same reductants will work on these. Nitro is the most oxidized form. It's very reactive, very easy to reduce down. Now, this is most commonly used to make anilines. So remember the aromatic amine. We're gonna, you would say, oh, I take my phenyl group, I add nitric acid with sulfuric acid to make uh, nitrobenzene. And then we're going to reduce this guy down to make an amine. This is the easiest way you can do this. We kind of did this when we dealt with the aromatic chapter. So that is as far as I think we'll go today. We'll go ahead and call it a little bit early. But that is all of the amine chapter. So Quick reminder of what all we covered. We talked about how to name amines, some of these strange uh, amine structures. We talked about how amines can potentially form, have a chiral shift, so it's kind of hard, uh, nitrogen inversion, so it's hard to form a chiral amine. Talked about the properties, including the basicity of amines. We talked about we talked about uh, uh, the the IR and NMR and mass spec of a well. We didn't really talk about mass spec. We just kind of skipped that. But we talked. Then we started to talk about reactions. Remember, we reminded ourselves of how the amines will react with ketones and aldehydes, 
how amines will be present in uh, aromatic substitutions as orthopara directors. Uh, we remind ourselves of how we can alkylate amines as a as like a standard SN2 reaction. And how do we deal with overalkylation? Remind ourselves how do we isolate amines? Uh, uh, we reminded ourselves, well, we taught ourselves new reactions with amine as a leaving group called the Hoffman elimination, which is a way to form an, a, the least sub substituted alkene by nitrogen. And we also did the COPE elimination, which is another way uh, to make a uh, what well, makes a nitro group, but let's see, COPE elimination, let's see, as a way, as a way to make an internal al alkene, as an internal elimination, as opposed to the external alkene. We talked about, uh, no, putting on a nitro group, to form a diazonium salt and the reactions that these diazonium salts will form. We talked about a whole lot of reductions of these. So we kind of, it kind of loops back because previously we talked about, oh, hey, we can isolate. Oh, we can form imines. Oh, well, you can then reduce them. So these are just ways to click on amines in the to make a chain length longer. And then uh, talked about reduction of azides and nitriles and nitro groups. So we finished up this chapter talking about reduction. So that's the end of this chapter. Uh, next chapter, we'll talk about carboxylic acids working our way into knowing all we need to know about proteins. Yeah, that'll be it. Have a good day. Chemistry Cowboy signing off.